SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. I'm Gérard Mourou, a researcher in lasers for uh, 43 years. I've been for 43 years basically working on uh, trying to make short, short pulses and trying to make high intensity pulses, high power pulses, and uh, trying to apply them to uh, to applications. The very, very short pulse laser were invented, uh, were demonstrated, you know, in 1966. And I was absolutely fascinated by the fact that you can really produce these extremely short pulses, you know, down in those days in a picoseconds, 10 minus 12 seconds. And now you know that we can, we can really produce pulses in, uh, in the attoseconds, and we are looking at uh, attoseconds and zeptoseconds, you know. I was attracted by, uh, by the, the shortness of the pulses, what you could do, okay? And uh, what you can do, you can do basically two things. You have your short pulses. What you can do, you can visualize, you know, extremely fast reactions, you know? You have reactions, you know, in, in, you know, in, in physics or in chemistry, you know, which are evolved over a period of times of picoseconds, you know, femtoseconds now. Even in nuclear physics, you know, it can be, um, you know, uh, attoseconds and so on. So uh, the fact that you can really follow these reactions, you know, uh, it it's, it's was mind-boggling mind for me. So the concept of CPA, you know, works this way, right? You take a short pulse that you are producing by using an oscillator somewhere, and that's easy. Then we stretch it. Then we amplify it. And then when we have extracted all the energy from your amplifiers, you recompress it. Okay. Now, this seems to be very easy. In fact, in practice, it's not. We have to have a, a matching between the uh, uh, stretcher and the compressor. Okay. Okay, so uh, when we started this work with Donna Strickland, uh, we didn't have the ideal system, the matched, the match uh, stretcher and compressor. And uh, the idea just came to me, I was just skiing, you know, uh, and you know when you are skiing, you are spending a lot of time, you know, on a chairlift, because you have, you have no, no phone, nothing, you know, just uh, you and Mother Nature. And then I, I thought about <coughs> how to make this, uh, this um, stretcher uh, this match stretcher compressor. Uh, and uh, immediately, you know, when I came on top of the chairlift, I went down directly. I went down to the lab and basically to, to pick up my car. Instead of, I stopped, I stopped the, the day of skiing. I went down. That was in Rochester, Bristol Mountains. And uh, went down, pick up my car, Went, immediate, went immediately in the lab, you know, which was at um, Rochester. And uh, my students were working. Um, my student at, uh, was Maurice Pessot, very good student. And I say, Maurice, just stop everything you are doing. You know, this is what we are going to do. And, and very uh, week or so after, he demonstrated, uh, Maurice demonstrated you know, the match stretcher compressor. This is a system, basically the system that everybody is using now, you know, has been, in, has been used for 20 years now, 25 years, because chopper amplification is 25 this year, you see. Laser is 50, but CPA is 25. <laughs> CPA is basically two things. As I said, either you're taking an existing systems, you know, and you get something like 10,000, 100,000 times more power, okay, a more peak power, or you can shrink the system by 10,000, 100,000 times, okay? And that's the reason why, for instance, you can use fibers now. You can use CPA with optical fibers, okay? And uh, so, you know, so, you know, uh, you choose. But, um, <clears throat> so, the reason we, uh, so, um, for instance, CPA made possible um, 
application in ophthalmology. Okay. In ophthalmology, uh, you need, of, of course, compact laser systems. Uh, you need also very short pulse lasers, you know, if you want to cut, for instance, cornea. Um, and uh, this kind of thing, so, uh, of course, CPA was very useful. Yeah. Was, uh, uh, and, um, and also, I mean, what is very important also, that it made possible to produce extremely high intensities. So we were able to get into new regimes in physics, into the physics of interactions. For instance, uh, we were able really, to, to go into the relativistic optics, okay? Something that people were dreaming, you know, when the laser was invented, okay? Uh, they said, wow, it would be nice, you know, if we could get to this level, you know, and this level is 10 to the 18 watt per square centimeter or so, then the electrons, you know, will become relativistic in the laser field. And that was, uh, that was of course, uh, a dream. And uh, when we, uh, with CPA, we, we could really fulfill this dream relatively easy, easily, in fact.